today is our third meeting uh, this year, uh, and we will be talking about tools and techniques that enrich Tableau. And we will focus on biz extension and machine learning. The agenda for today. Oh. I'm spoiling, sorry. The agenda for today is to give you a quick uh, community update. What uh, we've been doing since the beginning of the year and uh, what's more to come. Uh, I will also tell you a, bit, a little bit about the, the this context that, that we set up for you. Next, we will jump to machine learning in Tableau, uh, led by Bush Karmalski. Next, is uh, these extensions uh, delivered by uh, Christian Gilleben. Hope that's correct pronunciation. Okay. And at the very end, we will uh, uh, show the of, uh, of context uh, contest. So, first things first. First things first, this is the first thing. So the community update has already happened since the, the beginning of the year. We had uh, uh, two meetings. Uh, we host over uh, 50 participants. Uh, we covered topics uh, dedicated to uh, data engineering and machine learning. We uh, met at Salesforce uh, World Day at uh, Stadion Narodowe. And we had the chance to, to connect with many leaders of uh, other um, Salesforce uh, user group uh, leaders. And uh, we have um, some surprises for you that are yet to come. We are not sure if this is uh, going to happen this year or maybe next one, but for sure you, you should stay tuned. Mm. Later this, this year uh, is going uh, to be Data Farm in Europe uh, between 11 and 12 November, uh, hosted in uh, London. And the, the big um, announcement is that Agatha will be speaking there. She will be talking about how to dig into unknown, uh, uncovering secret inherited reports. Gata, maybe you want to, to say a little more about your presentation. Well, if I'm gonna uncover some secrets, I have to leave them secrets till November. So I think that's just enough for, for the moment. Okay, so not to spoil the, the surprise. And uh, for our uh, fourth meeting this year, prepare for you something very very special we are going to host the christmas tableau um, tip battle and we have very uh, special guests but we are not going to spoil the the surprise as well uh, regarding uh, regarding this meeting so really stay tuned because um going to be it's going to be very very interesting battle mm. so as promised, uh, um, we are going to um, vote for uh, for charts at, um, that were created as a part of uh, Chart Polish Champions with uh, Advis. And if, if you like, you can use the. I can see my mouse. You can. Uh, you can use this link to to access the. Um, survey and it, uh, the link will be active uh, during the, the whole um, meeting. Uh, Pavel, can you paste that to the, to the survey as well in the chat so everyone can easily access it because I will, you know, jump to another slide. And uh, so this is the link to today. I will quickly show you, oh, show you the devs that were, um, uh, can vote for. So the first one is by uh, Mateusz. And you can see the um, the overall trend and uh, with special focus on this year uh, results. So this is the, the first this. Uh, you can access it via the, the link that uh, Pavel already pasted in the a, in a chat. The second one is uh, by Bartosz. And uh, it shows the 
overall result of uh, Polish um, Olymp Olympics medals. And uh, you can see the change over time with a split uh, uh, for the, the particular um, sport. Uh, the third one is uh, by Mikhail, and it shows the um, uh, also the the summary uh, of total. I mean the the total number of uh, medals, uh, how it changed over time, and with special focus on on this year results. Apparently, I am facing some uh, connectivity issues, so you have to explore them on your own. Uh, to to know which one is your your favorite okay so this is about the the contest you can uh, again use this uh, either link or uh, qr code to access the the survey and um if you know which one is uh, you like the best you, you can already vote we will um uh, show the the, the results at the, the very end of the meeting. Okay, so uh, um, after a long, long time, we waited three months for this to happen. We are excited to, to finally welcome our next speaker, Mateusz Kalski. Uh, we had some technical issues last time, but we are thrilled that this presentation is fi finally happening today. And you know, as they say in at least in Poly Poland, what uh, what is postponed will still happen. So we are really, really uh, happy about this. Teusz uh, lives and breathes data. He has over ten years of commercial experience to turning raw, raw data into meaningful insight. He's uh, not only an expert in analytical management, but also a passionate advocate for. Uh, uh, data-driven decision-making. Mateusz is recognized as Tableau feature author. He won not, uh, he was, he won Viz of the Day not once, not two times, but three times. So you know you are in for very, very special. Today he'll be sharing his expertise in integrating machine learning with Tableau, with uh, focusing on price prediction. Without Further ado, Mateusz, the stage is yours. I will stop sharing so you can you can share. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Veronika, for uh, this great introduction. Uh, I think I'm still sharing. Yes. Stop sharing. Okay. Okay, let me uh, start sharing. Okay, uh, so I will talk today about uh, how to integrate machine learning models with Tableau. Of course, the topic is very complex, so we'll only, uh, you know, uh, I want to give you an idea how to uh, start doing this, um, because, you know, machine learning itself it's a very complex um, uh, area of, of of data science um, but tableau can be very useful here uh, when when integrating this technique so i'll try to to show you in a, in a few points how we can uh, integrate this um, uh, machine learning models with uh, tableau okay so first of all um, of course, as there are many definitions of what machine learning is. To me, the most simple is that, that it is the way of teaching machines without giving the rules explicitly. So the traditional, um, I would say, programming approach is that, that we give specific instruction to the machine, the, the computer, if uh, A happens, do B. If B happens, do D, and um, etc. But with machine learning, we are not doing this, we are giving data and a lot of data into the model and uh, we use these algorithms to um, so they can automatically discover something in our data which can be seen at the first uh, sight um, of course machine learning is uh, part of artificial intelligence um, it was very popular uh, specifically a few years ago 
because in the in the recent years there was a rapid development of of machine learning now we see that the focus of uh, artificial intelligence is more into nat natural language processing so we have this chat gpt's uh, models uh, which are basically doing generative uh, they are generating content based on uh, our request so so we ask the model and the model gives us uh, information machine learning is something different it's not generating um, generating content in that way but it gives us the answer to, uh, to to the questions and the usage in business environment i think um, uh, is even higher in case of of uh, machine learning uh, of course when we speak about machine learning there's there's a lot of uh, different kind of uh, of this we have unsupervised learning um, uh, supervised learning and reinforcement learning not to you know jump into um, more details the most um, useful from from business point of view i think is supervised learning uh, where we use regression to uh, predict continuous values like for example prices or uh, churn uh, and classification when we want to uh, make a prediction uh, for a classification of uh, given uh, category or, or given um, uh, dimension. Okay, so why, why machine learning? Um, machine learning and artificial intelligence are often, um, you know, um, we think about uh, about the future when we're talking about uh, about this, and it's partially true. Uh, but machine learning can be also used to better understand past. Uh, it can be also used to uh, fill blanks, so map all of current states, and of course making prediction for the future. So machine learning it's not only about uh, predictions, about um, about telling something about the future. It's also about uh, the present and uh, the past. Okay, uh, I will show you today a very simple business case, uh, but th this is very real scenario. Uh, so we will be uh, showing, um, will we predict, try to predict uh, predict uh, price of uh, used cars. Uh, this is real data scrapped from some um, uh, site with uh, advertisements in, uh, I think, US or, or Canada some years ago. Uh, so we have real data. Each, each row is uh, each individual car uh, and we have our selling price which will be the, um, the variable which we want to uh, predict. Uh, we'll also uh, choose features which are affecting prices. We'll make price estimation and we'll show you uh, how the whole market can be mapped using this uh, technique. Uh, technically, uh, we will try to predict uh, or to estimate continuous values. So we will use regression, not classification, and of course, traditional approach with uh, supervised learning. Um, how technically we can approach to, to this process? Uh, first of all, uh, we would need a Python instance installed on our computer. It could be, for example, Anaconda. We would need some uh, standard uh, libraries used in uh, data science, like Pandas, NumPy, and Scikit-Learn. Scikit-Learn is the machine learning uh, library. And we also would need uh, two libraries, basically this is one, uh, developed by Tableau, uh, which will be used to connect uh, to our model. Uh, it is called Tab uh, PI. Um, when we install this, uh, this package, then we can, uh, in PowerShell prompt, uh, launch a server using just Tab PI uh, command. And we will see this, uh, this screen. Uh, and in this case, uh, we are, um, you know, setting up this um, server on our local machine. So it is for our our usage only. Uh, but it also can be um, uh, can be launched on a Tableau server, so many people can have access to to this. But in this case, uh, we are launching for our own needs on our local uh, machine. When we do that. Uh, we need to connect um, you from a Tableau um, using this help, settings at performance, and uh, manage analytics extensions. Uh, when we do that, we will see 
uh, this window when we can select a, a connection type. Um, we will be using uh, tab PI, but we can also use uh, some other things like uh, RSER, for example, if we are using R language instead of uh, tab PI or any other analytical extension. But the most um, you know common is the the most um, useful, I think, that the most common is uh, tab PI. Um, next, we will see the um, the window with uh, connection details. We will put here um, as hostname localhost and port 9004. Uh, if we are launching tab PI on, uh, on um, external server, then we will have another things to put here. If everything uh, is okay, then we will see this um, uh, this information that we are successfully connected to the analytical extension. We need to have tab PI if we want to run uh, Python scripts inside uh, Tableau. Okay, so if we have this uh, connection set up, how can we uh, use scripts with uh, machine learning models um, within uh, Tableau? Okay. Uh, so first of all, we can use a function uh, which is called script real, and uh, the simple as that is we just put um, the fragment of, of code into the calculated field inside Tableau. The code is uh, pretty much the same as uh, we would do in any other uh, code editor, uh, but the uh, difference is here in input data because we need to uh, make uh, uh, this column stack, and, and p means numpy, uh, from our arguments, with, which are coming from our data. So we have um, these fields in orange represents um, fields from our data uh, source. We need these fields also to have an aggregation. Uh, so I want to be, you know, explaining this code. It is pretty simple, but a few few lines of codes, and we have a, a very basic um, machine learning uh, model inside Tableau. Of course, it's not very uh, convenient to work with code inside a calculated field because it's not code editor. It also have uh, you know limited space on the um, uh, on the screen. And if we if we have uh, very advanced models, then then it's no way we can develop this inside the calculated field in, field in Tableau. Uh, that's why there are other methods we can be used. Uh, second one is using external uh, code editor like uh, Jupyter Notebook, and then uh, deploying model into Tab PI server. Uh, how does it work? Um, basically, we are doing the whole um, machine learning model inside Jupyter. Um, and uh, when we have this model uh, fitted, we need to uh, define a function uh, and then deploy this function into tab PI uh, server. So this is the first, uh, the first step. The second is on tab PI, we can see uh, the deployed model. And then from inside Tableau, we can reach out to this deployed function to uh, to return return um, a prediction. So in this case, we are not writing these uh, lines a lot of lines of code. We are just ri writing return tab by query, and then we specify uh, which function and list of arguments which are coming from our uh, data. And there's also a problem uh, with this that. In this case, of course, it is easier to develop this model in external uh, code editor. Um, but still, uh, we are um, making prediction based on on aggregated uh, values. So, so instead of uh, you know predicting um, uh, predicting price for each car, we are predicting price for average car. So. Um, this will be calculated on the same granular level as our visualization. Uh, so if we don't have in our visualization the most detailed uh, level of granularity, then we are simply making um, uh, prediction for average um, this uh, for average measures. 
it should basically not the case of uh, of machine learning because we would we can just you know simply take averages and the effect will be the same um that's why there's a third way also very uh, useful and introduced i think last year or two years ago uh, which is called table extensions so it is like a code editor or integrated uh, developer environment i think this idea is is a shortcut for um, this is the view which can be um, seen in data source tab um, and when we put table extension on uh, on this sheet we can see some low level code editor it is not uh, it is not in this case the same thing as putting code inside calculated field because as you can see um, we have different colors for uh, specific commands so if we are importing uh, some libraries we have in blue um, we have our uh, dimensions in uh, in orange so it it is um, not you know a advanced cons editor uh, code editor like jupyter for example but it's still a useful tool to have inside tableau the most important thing that we have two tables in case of table extensions first is input table and this is uh, something which is called argument one here and we have output table and then this output table we can analyze further in uh, in worksheet in in worksheets um, in inside tableau desktop and in this case we are making predictions row by row and it's not inside calculated field it is just another column in our uh, data uh, okay uh, but if you want to to also talk about uh, how we can use this in a business environment um here's the situation when we uh, we are reaching to the uh, deployed function to uh, to tap pi server and instead of giving um, the, the fields from our data uh, we are using uh, parameters and parameters as you can see here uh, we can choose from this uh, from this list uh, we can choose uh, parameters uh, from this list and this calculated field will um, show us the prediction of a price another use case uh, when we are using uh, table extensions uh, we can easily compare uh, the real data um, to the prediction and here we can see that the prediction is no longer a calculated field uh, it is the uh, you know the, the um, separate column same as selling price so it's just a column in our data and we can assess uh, how accurate our uh, model is and when the errors are the uh, most for example we can see that in case of uh, sport body type and the error is the the highest and the same with plus i don't know, even know what that means but in some cases we can see that our um, uh, model works uh, quite well and given that if we see that this uh, in uh, some cases the errors are not that high uh, we can then fit this uh, fit this data uh, fit this model with data without selling price so then we can force the model to make a prediction um, uh, based on uh, selected features uh, and here's the, the this case uh, when we can use um, a machine learning model to fill in uh, blanks so to so to somehow map the the whole market because you know even if we are selling a lot to a lot of places we are probably not covering every product in every geography in, in every segment or in every uh, region we still uh, have some blanks in our data and if we want to fill this uh, somehow we can use machine learning models so on the uh, left hand side here we can see the actual data from um, uh, from our data source um, and we can see of course a lot of uh, blank spaces because 
there are some strange uh, body types here uh, but also you know for example um, uh, in in some cases maybe some more popular uh, body type we still have some blanks in uh, some popular um, uh, producers so we can use machine learning models to make this into this and uh, based on this have an overview for um, uh, for the whole uh, for the whole market okay so to to, to summary uh, why use tableau um, i was talking about this but of course data exploration uh, self-service drag and drop is very useful uh, feature of tableau um, in, in with machine learning models we are working with a lot of data uh, the more the better so if we want to build uh, some kind of knowledge <laughs> um, about what's behind this data the tableau is a good tool uh, it's definitely better than than using uh, some uh, libraries in python to to try to to uh, to explore this data uh, so for data exploration, of course, Tableau, I think, is a really, uh, really good choice. Uh, model deployment, uh, so interface for multiple users. Uh, so uh, in this case, if we are using a tab PI uh, on Tableau server, uh, then we can give access to a lot of people uh, to, to the model which we deployed uh, on uh, these uh, Tableau servers. And then we can use the results of prediction in uh, calculation, visualizations, and dashboard. Uh, this is what I show you, uh, especially using uh, table extensions. When we have this prediction as a separate uh, column, we can use this information to, uh, to assess the quality of uh, our model. And of course, if we happy with that, we can uh, use uh, Tableau to, to visualize the, the results on the dashboard. So I think that's uh, that's it from my side. Uh, if there are if there are any questions, uh, I think I can try to answer. Uh, I see the question about VM. VM is virtual machine, right? I think. Yeah, I, I think so. So yes. would you recommend having a separate virtual machine for this uh, tab UI? I think in general it's it's always a good idea to 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 have this on on a separate uh, VM, but I don't think it's the the the, the necessity. Uh, mm -hmm. Me, for example, I'm using um, uh, this tab PI only for our for my own uh, purposes on my uh, my machine. So for that local host, I think it's enough. Um, I would like to ask you about the dashboard performance uh, so basically what's happening when you connect to the tab pi and how it looks like from from the uh, performance perspective uh, if we are using uh, this method uh, this one it can be uh, really slow because each time when we change anything on the dashboard like for example apply filter uh, then um, the results are uh, calculated again. So this means it is again sent to tab PI uh, server and then the result is um, getting back. So uh, in this case, uh, this can be really slow, uh, but this is can be avoided using table extensions uh, because here you, you do uh, when you refresh uh, your data source, then you uh, are executing this uh, this code and if we have output table then no longer uh, you have a calculated field here so it's no different than any other field in so the prediction is no different than any other field in our data set and it's really um uh, really faster to work uh, to work with this that way that's why i'm a fan of table extensions okay makes sense for me thank you and does it make any difference if you are using the, the live connection or uh, extracted data? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, regarding the performance. Regarding the performance. Um, I don't think so. 
I think, you know, it's always uh, generally faster to work with, with extract. Um, but I never notice any uh, any you know drop of performance. Does anyone else have any question to to Mateusz and his presentation? If you have, um, you can paste them in the chat so so we can ask it uh, to Mateusz. If not, I will take over the, the screen. Okay, so thank you very, very much. It was quite abstract, uh, useful, uh, I guess, uh, but abstract for, for many of us. So uh, we have to, you know, sync the, uh, the, the knowledge. Uh, using the opportunity, I will Okay, this is my screen. I will remind you that you can vote uh, for the, the VIS. Uh, Agata, what is the, the current uh, voting number? Well, at the moment we've got seven votes and we really hope for the more votes, the better yes. game. Yes, especially that we have 80 people with us. So, uh, I believe at least 11 is missing. So yeah, you can use this uh, QR code and link or link pasted in a in the chat. If you want to check out the um, business, uh, you can use the, the links Pavel already pasted. Uh, Pavel, you can paste them maybe again, so they are on top of uh, everything. Mm. While you are voting, hopefully, uh, I will move forward. And um, uh, up next, uh, we are thrilled to, to welcome uh, a true leader in the, the world of data visualization, Tristan Gideven. Tristan is Tableau visionary, Tableau ambassador, and he won the Iron Vis champion uh, in 2017. He's also founder of, and lead of uh, La Database, a remote data visualization studio behind the Adviz, the app which some of you had chance to play with during our contest. Today he is joining us to showcase uh, his other tool, Viz Extensions, which are already available uh, in the Tableau desktop, I believe starting from 2024.2 version and are going to be available uh, very soon in Tableau Public. So in the next 30 minutes, uh, you will see how these tools can uh, supercharge your database. Tristian, the, the stage is yours. Thank you. I will yeah, stop sharing. And... Yep, perfect. So I will Now the stage is yours, yeah. Screen, and I will put you over here. So. If there is any question or like if anything happened, I can read you on the right and I will share my presentation, which is this one. Okay. Um, thanks a lot for the introduction. So yeah, as you said, today we're going to talk about this extension. Uh, my name is Tristan Guillauvin. You said it perfectly. Uh, you can find me anywhere at La Database. Um, and La Database, as you said, is a, a very small uh, data visualization studio that we have with my partner, Jessica Bautista. Um, Today, I will really focus on this extension. We have 30 minutes, so I will really um, speak about that mainly and, and the process that, that how we, we, uh, how we arrive to this extension. And I will also just um, make a, a really quick demo at the end uh, with, of the Figma to Tableau plugin. It's a plugin we have uh, just to make the dashboard that we will create with this extension a bit, a bit better very quickly. Um, so we are going to build this, uh, this, two dashboards together. One is already, uh, the, the worksheet already ready, but for the Viz extension, we are going to build everything from scratch. And then we are going to make like all the navigation button and et cetera. Um, so before we get to, to this part, uh, that's, that's the end goal, we need to go back in 2015. To that 2015, I started working as a Tableau consultant, it was my very first job. 
Um, and my very first task as a consultant was to work with the Council of Europe in Strasbourg. Um, and my goal was to uh, recreate this book, which was a, like a 200, 300 page book. I don't remember exactly, but in the hundreds. And to recreate that book in Tableau, in Tableau visualization. So the book was mainly uh, made out of uh, tables uh, and also bar charts and also map, right? So we took all of those charts, all of those tables, all of those maps, all of those bar charts, and we made them in Tableau Public. Today, this visualization is still available on Tableau Public because everything was on, is, on, is on Tableau Public. So you can still find them. Um, but it was essentially making tables, bar charts, bar chart and maps. And then I went to work for another client and I did tables, bar charts and maps and made some line charts. And then I went to another client and I did the same. And the same and the same and the same. And I think maybe if you are someone who is a bit more creative, you have this kind of feeling that, okay, when I work for my clients or when I work for my company, I always end up making the same type of charts. There is nothing wrong about that as in they are really efficient, they are really good, and they exist for a good reason, but maybe you want to be a bit more creative, like me. I wanted to try to see what I could create if I didn't have a boss or a client that would tell me what to do, right? So that's when I started to use Tableau Public. So I used Tableau Public, and I started to visualize things that I like. For example, beer consumption. I like to drink beer sometimes. So uh, I looked at beer consumption uh, in the European country, beer production and the amount of breweries. Uh, I did, so sorry, beer consumption, production, breweries. I did another one about not using your car to go to work, um, where you could see that the, the, this, one, this one was in, so how many people can go by bike um, and all the, the work, uh, home to work trip you could do by bike. And another one about um, the forest, so the percentage of forest cover, the biodiversity in those forests, the percentage of deforestation that have happened, and the endangered species in those areas. And thanks to this visualization, I was able in 2017, like, like you, you, you mentioned, to compete for IronVis competition. Very quickly, IronVis competition is uh, the main Tableau competition that happens every year during the Tableau conference, where three people that have been selected uh, fight on stage, and the fight is that we both, we the three contestants, have to create a dashboard in 20 minutes live on stage, starting from a blank Tableau page. Um, this is the visualization that I did in 20 minutes. Um, the data set that we have was the housing market in the US. So I focused my visualization on showing the three main periods that happen. Uh, with the housing market crash in the US, so the bubble, the crisis, and the recovery on the on the left. Uh, and then I show an animation where you could see from 2005, so the peak of the bubble, you could see the crisis happening in the US where the percentage of houses that, that uh, increase in value really uh, completely went negative, right? So we had more houses that were losing value than houses that were gaining value. So you could really see the crisis uh, happened like um, at the beginning of, of 2010, uh, 2008, sorry. So I did those three visualizations. They were all Vs of the day. I won the Aaron Vs competition with a visualization, but in the end, it was just bar charts, maps, line charts. Well, if not line chart, it was an area chart, but it's basically the same. I didn't create in any of those visualizations. This is just like a really thin bar chart with an icon on top and a dual axis. This is just a bar chart with another small bar chart on top to make the foam. Everything is just bar chart, line chart, and maps, right? I didn't do anything special. You can look everywhere. It's just bar chart and line chart. <laughs> so I actually felt that I was stuck because even though I had the feeling of being more creative, I was still stuck in what Tableau allowed me to do. Uh, and the reason why I was stuck, it was because my data visualization process involved Tableau at every step of the way. I never tried to adventure myself in doing something a bit different, right? And if I'm honest with you, it looks more like this. I was doing the data exploration in Tableau for sure, the publishing too, but in the middle, it was just like, okay, let's make more worksheets and let's try to do this. And now let's make the dashboard. Ah, let's go back to the worksheet to change. I didn't have a clear process in the way I was building my dashboards. So 
Um, it took me a bit of time, but after in 2019, I went to the Tableau conference. I went on a hike um, and I met some amazing people. And I wanted to visualize the interaction of the people during the, the conference, right? So for that, I built a website. And actually, I need just to open a new window of my browser. I will put that uh, here. Yes. So I made this visualization where every dot is a Twitter account. Um, and you could see if there is a link between two uh, accounts, it means that those two accounts, they had an interaction on Twitter. It means that they were tagged in the same picture or they were the answer to each other. Um, yeah, and it was all the, the tweet that had data 19 uh, included in their tweet. The size of the bubble is the number of tweets. So of course, this one, this big one is Tableau themselves. And you can see Sarah here that looks tweet, Mark, uh, and Katie, for those people who, who know the Tableau community, you know those people usually tweet a lot during the conference. And then you can select one circle and then you can move it around. You can, you can do a lot of things, right? That of course you cannot do in Tableau. Um, so this was not built in Tableau. This was built on the web using uh, JavaScript and D3 and other library. But my question was, okay, can I recreate that in Tableau? Because it's a viz about, it's a network about the Tableau people, the Tableau community it would be great to have it in Tableau. So I tried to think, okay, how can I make this a Tableau visualization? Well, in the end, this is kind of simple. This is just circles and lines that have a X and Y position, right? There is nothing more complex than plotting circles and plotting lines, it's things that we can do in Tableau. The difficulty is where do I plot them? How do I put them on my axis? Well, if you use D3 to do, to do that, you can format your data in a JSON file with a list of nodes and a list of links. And then you will put those nodes and those links into a function that is called for simulation. It's a D3 function. And this function, you don't need to understand how it works, but this function will calculate the X and the Y coordinates, right? So you, you don't have to calculate them anything. All the calculations are done by that function. And then my idea, uh, and that, that is really the, the beginning of all the, the work that I, did, that I did in Advis, the idea was instead of plotting the X and the Y in the web browser, was to write the X and the Y that these three calculate, write them in CSV file, right? Since they are CSV file, Tableau can read CSV file. So if I give those two nodes.csv and links.csv to Tableau, I can make a dual axis with lines and circles and plot my X and my Y and I have a network, right? So the entire idea was using JavaScript and D3 to calculate the coordinates, export them in CSV and give that CSV to Tableau so Tableau can plot the uh, visualization. And I reused that same technique to make Voronoi tree map, uh, to make a uh, circle packing about wines. I really reuse that technique all the time to be like, okay, I use these three to calculate and I use Tableau to render and to visualize. And eventually that allowed me to become a uh, Tableau Zen master in 2020. Now, something else happened in 2020, if you remember correctly, it was not the best time to become a Tableau Zen master because suddenly we were all stuck at home for the next two years. Uh, so not, uh, not many things happen after that directly. I had to wait 2023. I moved to another country. I created my, my company, like created La Database. I started working um, as, a, as a freelancer. And that's really in, two, in 2023 that things started to move again on my side. Um, I continue that, that work of combining different tools. And this time, I not only combine D3 to make a network, I also use Figma to start adding a bit a better design to my visualization. So the font that I was not supposed to be able to use it in Tableau. Uh, I, I made it an image, thanks to Figma. Those, um, those gradient on the nodes, I also use Figma. Uh, here I have some glowy effect, uh, also the title, the legend. I, I built a lot of things in Figma before putting it in Tableau, right? So it, it was really about blending 
uh, blending tools. And then I also learned to be a better developer. So I knew a bit of G3, but I really uh, learned Svelte and Webflow that allow me to create this kind of um, interactive uh, visualization on the web where you could just uh, scroll and animate to discover how the Marvel Cinematic Universe um, was built, right? So all of that allow me to change this data visualization process from something really messy to something where I could use different tools at different points of time that really help me to understand what I'm doing and to help me uh, to do better visualization, right? So we have uh, Figma and Webflow that are focused on the design, Svelte and D3 and, uh, that are focused on the development, and then D3 and Tableau that are really focused on the data, right? So design, development, and data, that is a, everything you need in order to create a product. And my very first product, which is free and which some of you have used for the competition is for the, the contest is Advis. So Advis um, is a tool oops, that you can find on my website, ladatavis.com. If you go to tools, uh, you will have Advis. And then Advis, just to explain uh, to, to you, you have used it, I, I saw during the contest, just to explain, you select a visualization, you import, you input, sorry, your data. And once you have input your data, you can modify the visualization and then download the result in that case in Tableau Desktop. So if I go to my Tableau Desktop here and I open it, um, yeah, sorry, download it uh, here, uh, chord.twbx. Uh, and if I open it, I will have the exact same chord diagram that I have in the website, right? Behind the scene, it's exactly what I, I explained you with the network, the website calculate things with D3. And when you click on download, it converts the, the, that visualization to a CSV file and put it in a Tableau file that you receive in your download uh, folder automatically. So you can visit the gallery here, uh, uh, something that Jessica built, where you can see all of the visualization that have been built using uh, using this tool. And I will add the, the one that uh, you have shared with me about the, the contest to the gallery. So you can also find all the Voronoi that have been uh, built, all the tree diagram, all the different kind of visualization. Um, this tool, as you, you know, for those who have tried, is completely free. And it's really allowing people to build advanced visualization on Tableau public. Right, so we have found uh, 240 Tableau public visualization that were built with the tool, and among them, 35 uh, visualization were awarded this of the day. Not only because they have an advanced chart, but it really had allowed people to build this uh, this kind of more uh, beautiful charts or more advanced, let's say. So, the way it works is exactly what I explained. Right, you have your data, you put it in Advis. Advis will package will create the visualization and put it in a CSV and put that in a Tableau file. Now, the main issue and the reason why that tool is free is because you cannot connect Advis to your actual Tableau data source. Meaning if you want to filter your data, if your data change, if anything happened with your data set, well, you need to go back to the tool to re-input your data and to regenerate the result, right? You always need to go, go back to uh, exporting your data, putting it in Advis, and, and put it into Tableau. So we were a bit stuck, and we were like, OK, well, that's, that's just the way it is. That's the way we are going to, to, to use the tool. You, you could support it, but we could not make it uh, an actual product because it was only for Tableau Public. And one day, Tableau contacted us uh, on Slack and be like, OK, we are releasing something called Viz extension that could allow you to make these three visualization inside Tableau. You know, huh, that sounds interesting, right? So we try it. And actually, the way these extensions work is like it creates a bridge between Tableau and some code, JavaScript, D3, or whatever. So what is rendered inside Tableau, in your view, is no longer VSQL. It can be anything, right? So in that example, you can see that I'm using the network marks, which is not a mark that normally exists, that I know I have a source and a target uh, marks card, and that I have a new button that allow me to format the extension, right? So this is the, the first demo we are going to start to show you a bit how you can use 
um, this extension. So I have prepared this sales dashboard demo about the sample superstore in Europe, uh, and we are going to make some this extension. So the way it works is uh, on these marks here, you can find your this extension that you already have loaded. But if you don't have any, if you start from a blank page, you could go here and look at the different these extensions. So for example, if I go in, if I search La Database, you can find all our these extensions. So we have a tree diagram, the stream graph, basically everything that you we have on AdVis is available um, here and more. We have some radar, some gouge that are not available on, on AdVis. So you can you can load uh, any of them. I'm just going to access my local Viz extension. Uh, so I have the, the safe preferences. Uh, and if you have a local one, you can just load a T-Rex file. So I'm going to start with a tree there. Okay. So we have this tree diagram and we start with that page that explain you how to use the Viz extension because we are aware that Viz extension is something new. Uh, so we want to help people understand how the how it's supposed to be used just put that here so you for, to make a tree diagram you just need to drag and drop dimension on detail so let's try that uh, and actually i'm going to use the location i'm going to use the the region uh, i'm going to use the different country so we already have our first tree diagram and i could visualize for example the sales as the size and really easily with just drag and drop we have created an advanced visualization in Tableau without leaving Tableau. And I could filter that, I could uh, refresh my data source, it will be um, live. Uh, if I click on an element, you can see that we have some, um, some highlights, some, some filtering up. And that button, Format Extension, allow you to open uh, advanced formatting to your chart. So for example, you may want to have a layout that is more horizontal, like that. You may want to display the root here, which will be the total sales. So when you put your mouse here, you have the total sales amount. You could change the size of the nodes and many other things. And uh, what I'm just going to do is change the color and be, okay, I would like to color by region and I want to use the observable 10 color palette. Okay, I think this is good. You could also change the label, the sheet. We have a lot of options. I will let you discover all of that. So we have our first uh, advanced visualization, our first Viz extension that I'm going to call Viz extension and be like sales by, by country. Okay, that's our first one. We can create a second one. I'm just going to go ahead and create a stream graph. And for the stream graph is just so we can have something that, that um, moves through time. So I'm going to put order date in time. I'm going to put sales in size. We already have something. Um, we can change that to look at the monthly evolution. And maybe we again put the read in color. So you can see it's really as if I was using Tableau. I could put some in the sales in, in size and I could put region in color and it will add some color. Now we have some nice tooltip. We have some selection. And if I go on format, I can again change my color to um, observable 10. Um, the margin is at zero. We can change the border width, but it's, it's okay. I'm going to keep it like that. Maybe the axis, I will just remove the label to have a bit more space. Okay, that's a second visualization. This extension, evolution of sales. And then finally, I'm going to make a last one. And this one, I'm going to mix things up a bit because I'm always doing the same demo and I want to do something a bit different. Uh, and I have seen that a lot of people like the uh, radar chart. Uh, it's one of the most popular, so we are going to use that. So we are going to use the subcategory as the spoke, the sales as the values. So now you can see the different sales by subcategories. And again, the region in detail, so we can see our different, our different region. Um, what since it's Tableau, uh, all the sorting is still the same as if you are using Tableau. So you can click on sort, sort by field, descending, and now you have your uh, subcategories sorted by sales. I think it looks good. We can go to format. Uh, you can change a lot of things in, in the radar. I'm not going to enter in the, the detail. 
just going to change that to observable 10. So we always have the same color and we can add the, the legend maybe for readability. So we know which, re no, actually, you know what? The, the color are already the same in the tree. So I don't actually need a legend. Okay. And this one will be this extension in our sales by subcategory and region. Okay, uh, now we can make, of course, a dashboard because we are in Tableau. So I'm just going to make this one a bit more wide and we can put our sales by region, our evolution of sales and the sales by subcategory here. Let's make this a bit smaller, something like that. And of course, it's supposed to be part of Tableau. It's supposed to look and feel exactly like if it was a Tableau dashboard. So if you use this worksheet as a filter, and then you click on Central, you will filter your dashboard. You can control, select. You could be, OK, I want to compare United Kingdom with Germany. And you will see that all the charts are actually uh, updated, filtered based on this time of tree diagram, right? So it looks and feels like Tableau. And this dashboard, we are going to call it uh, this extension dashboard, yeah, just for the demo, OK? So we have made uh, really easily a, a dashboard that actually you would have spent hours and you will need to go in different tool and do some data densification and a lot of things in order to achieve that. And now you, you have it directly in Tableau. And it's really, if my data source change, if I have new data, it will automatically be updated. I don't have to do anything. Um, yeah. So that was the this extension demo. So we actually didn't, I didn't show you that. I showed you a radar, but you understand it's the same. I also change a bit the color. It's the same idea. Um, but I just wanted to, to finish this quick demo uh, by showing you um, the how you can go from, from this dashboard to something with uh, that is a bit more design, a bit more clean, because I think that is essential when you build a dashboard. Uh, but of course, you know that if you use Tableau, all the design, all the formatting aspects are really time consuming because you need to go in each and every uh, container, change the padding, change the background, change the border for each and every one of them. You cannot bulk change them. And then in the end, you usually end up with something that you have horizontal container in tiled and it's just, it just can easily be a mess. And what we want is something clean and something that goes fast. So I'm going to show you how I usually design all of my dashboard using uh, Figma. Uh, so when you are in Figma, you can uh, build this kind of, of dashboard. And then we have created a plugin that allows you to convert that Figma design uh, into a Tableau dashboard. So you can add a worksheet here. So for example, if I say sale, uh, sale map, I could add this worksheet to my design. And in that design, all the elements, like for example, this one that start with sheet, are elements that are going to be converted to a Tableau worksheet, right? So if I convert, if I export that, that, that uh, design as a Tableau dashboard, I will have the exact same layout, but this time I will have um, that in Tableau with dummy worksheet instead of my, my different sheet that I have here. And all of my layout is perfectly clear and, and clean, and I didn't have to do anything, right? So that's really how the plugin works. What you can do is select an existing workbook. Uh, so for example, let's put the sales dashboard demo here that I think I didn't save it. So it's not going to, I'm just going to save it to make sure. Um, and then um, if I have a, an existing dashboard, I can see here that um, all the worksheets that exist in the dashboard, you can see them here and see if you have them in your design, right? So just by matching the name, I can make sure that I have, I'm using those worksheets in my design. Then I can export that. And now the, the twist, oops, it's here. Yeah, I saved it again. Sales dashboard demo, perfect. Now, if I open this, I will not have dummy worksheets. I will actually have 
uh, actual the actual worksheets that I have in my design. So this is my Viz extension. But if I go on Sales Figma, you should see that now we have instead of my ugly sales dashboard, I have them all correctly with my logo, with everything. And this is this is an image. This is text that you can modify. It's it's there is no trick. It actually converts the design to the actual Tableau visualization. You can do more advanced design. I'm not going to show that uh, in detail. It's not the purpose. But you can also create design with rounded corners and everything and export that as a background image. But what I really wanted to, to finish today is I already created this, um, this dashboard that will fit my, um, my, my first sales dashboard. But now I just want to make this dashboard that has my, my Viz extension into a, a better dashboard. So what I can do is go to generate here and say that I want to export something like this style. And I'm going to be Viz extension dashboard. Uh, let's say, let's call it new. And I can click generate. And it will automatically generate the dashboard for me with the two button, because that's what I want. I want two button with a logo. I could import the logo of my company. But I have my dashboard, right? And then if I, again, select my sales dashboard demo, I can really quickly select the sheet and be this is sales by country. This one is evolution of sales. And this one is my sales by subcategory and region. And I can just make this one a tiny bit smaller like that. OK. Thing we are good, you can select both of them. And you can see that now we are using all of the worksheet in my uh, imported workbook. And I could even go in navigation and be like synchronized navigation. So my navigation button will have the correct name and they will actually work as navigation button. So now if I go on export and I, oops, I need to import it again and I export this place, I will have my final uh, sales dashboard, which contains all of my Viz extension and two beautifully designed dashboard. So that's, that's the old one, but I will have sales Figma. So that's the new one that I show you. And if I click on this button, I will have my Viz extension dashboard new with every element, with a nice spacing, with a nice color, with a nice logo, and with button that actually works. So you can see how, uh, and that's really how I work every day with my client. I start by doing a quick dashboard in Tableau. And then instead of having to do all the formatting manually, I do the formatting in Figma and I export the, the dashboard. So we went from having, um, we, we actually built those two dashboards together kind of really quickly. I tried to go as fast as possible to, to um, take care of your time. Um, and that was the presentation about this extension and a bit beyond, right? We went, I really wanted to show you the full story of how this, extent, this extension came to exist, the reason why it's such a, an impactful change today in Tableau. Um, so that was the, the presentation. You can follow us at La Database. Uh, Jessica and I, we are working every day. Actually, this week, we are going to release two new this extension. Um, that I shared on, on, on the different social media. Um, you can find our website. It's called ladatavis.com. Uh, we have a newsletter that is called Uncharted Area, where every week, more or less, we try to share the new features or the new uh, products that we have made. And a YouTube channel, but you can find all of that in that QR code. So if you want to see all of the links of the things that I have shared, uh, where to find us, you can scan that QR code. And I also want to thank uh, the people who organized the, the, this talk to invited me to, to speak today. Uh, and I'm really going to read the questions if there is any. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Tristan. There are actually quite a few questions. So you maybe can start with them. The first comes from Mateusz, and it's the question if these extensions will work with Tableau Public at some point. Is there a um, chance? No. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So actually, nothing actually technically prevents us from using this extension on Tableau Public. Um, if you open the latest version of Tableau Public 2024.2, you will find this extension. The only thing is currently Tableau, if you click on Sandbox, Tableau has only allowed their own Sankey as a Sandbox extension, right? To be able to use them on Tableau Public, it needs to be Sandboxed. And they have just been really slow at letting us know how or what is the process of sandboxing extension. Um, we are in discussion with the devs. Uh, they are telling us that it's coming. But as you can see, none of the other extensions that exist are sandboxed. The only one is the Sankey. As soon as our Viz extension can be sandboxed, then they will be automatically available on Tableau Public. It's not on us. We cannot do anything technically to make it. Uh, it needs to be Tableau that um, that take care of that. But yeah, it could be it could be a Tableau Public today or tomorrow, uh, as as soon as they they allow sandboxing. It's available on Tableau Desktop, Tableau Cloud, and Tableau Server. No issue. Just Tableau Public needs to be uh, sandboxed. Okay, great. Thank you. And uh, we have another question from Emmanuel. Is there a way to modify the like having different arrangements of the charts? Like the, the Viz extension? I bet so. Yeah, so so for example, like the tree, I think is a good example. You can change the, the layout. Uh, for each Viz extension that we have, we have tried to think about the way people could uh, or would interact with it. So we have tried to give as much configuration uh, as possible. So for example, if I use the, the tree map, this one is a good example because you can do a lot of different things with the tree map. So if I put subcategory and, and sales, you may want it as a circle, uh, but here you can want it as an ellipse, as a triangle, as an equitable, as a rectangle, as a square, whatever, right? So we have tried every time to, to think, okay, what is useful for the people? And we have added this configuration. So um, if anyone thinks that we should add an option in the configuration menu, just let us know and we can develop it. This is really, we, are comp we have complete freedom into what we can program in this, in this thing. So yeah, just, just feel, feel free to let us know. Uh, sounds amazing. And then Emmanuel has written a little bit more. The layout okay. on uh, Matu Tableau. <laughs> How yes, about so, that? Uh, sorry. So, well, I, I, I answer a question about this extension. But, so, we have here predefined layout. So, depending on how many worksheets you have, one, two, three, four. And of course, if you have more, you can always have more. But for example, you want different layout, you can have something like this. And once you have generated uh, one, predefined layout, nothing prevents you from uh, going crazy from there and be like, no, actually I want another and I want to make those two, um, I want to frame them and maybe make them one below each other. Like we, like it, in the end it's just Figma, right? So you are completely, I want to be too fast, but you are completely free to do whatever you want with, with, your, with your design, right? It's just, this is just the, the generating is just to help people who don't know Figma, how they can go a bit faster in the, the generation. But if you don't like this and you would actually want that smaller, you can make it smaller. Like in the end, this just generates frames and rectangles, but then you are completely free to, to arrange them uh, as you want. Okay, that sounds fantastic. And then one question from me or series of yep. questions maybe uh well i'm absolutely fan of uh these extensions that you have prepared with uh, jessica because they are so neat and elegant and the question or two questions are if you plan any more and the other is if you think any about doing anything about tables in tableau tables for if you want to make them at least a bit more advanced, they tend to be a nightmare. So uh, having them done as neatly as elegant and elegantly would be a wonderful thing. Yep. 
I agree. I agree with you. Uh, with the second thing, tables are really important. Uh, I will answer them in the the correct order. So yeah, we are constantly developing new new things. So for example, um, I currently we have done a polar one that is not yet available, but is will be available this week because it's already submitted. So this one you can have maybe. If I do something like that, and then I put uh, category in column, you can have this, or you can put region. So if you have an idea, if you want, want a chart that we don't have yet available, but you would like to have it, just let us know, and we can put it in the development. This is actually a client that reach out and be like, hey, I would really like to have this kind of charts. Can you make it? And in the end, we, we made it. Um, on another kind of um, area, we also can make things that are not necessarily visual. So we have also developed this drill down filter. So if I put region and country, um, uh, I guess it's the, the free version. Can I, can I, mm, well, it's okay. Uh, I can show case it like that, uh, but then I make um, a dashboard. Uh, not actually let's put, let's put it on this one so if i take my sheet nine i will just put it like that for the moment it's not the most beautiful but you will get it uh, and i go to action and i create a filter action from my sheet nine to the rest so now we have created an extension that allow you to make um a menu in like a drill down menu in Tableau that does not require any trick or anything. You can just use that to filter your dashboard. Actually, I'm currently working on it because the our demo version will be limited to, to 10 visible elements, but of course you will have the entire, um, the entire drill down um, available. So this is just trying to think about all the small things that annoy us in Tableau and how we could make this extension that fix that that issue um, and to answer your question about the table we were thinking about it but mm -hmm. there is already one built by um, infotopics they already have super table and we also saw but, but we we would have been happy to make our own that is cheaper but we also saw that actually where it is um, public, uh, table Table Viz extension. Tableau is going to release their official Table Viz extension in the next release of Tableau. Uh, so this will be automatically sandboxed. It will be free because is Tableau. Um, Tableau made it, um, and you already pay for Tableau. Uh, so they will already have something that is a Table Viz extension. So what we will do is like we will see if we have a way to even make it better make it better than what Tableau and Infotopics have. If we think we can make it better, we will do. If we think that the offer is already existing and, and nice, I guess we, we are not necessarily wanting to add something to what Tableau already does. So maybe, maybe not. We'll see. Mm -hmm. Hey, I also have one question because uh, I had a chance to play with uh, these extensions and they are amazing, of course, but the the one limitation I notice is um, mm -hmm. with Tableau when you are using some dimension as a color coding, right? You you mm -hmm. basically once put it on a um, single chart is is global, right? You you will carry this color coding throughout the the whole dashboard, but with this extension, it's quite isolated and the the problem i am facing i'm seeing uh, is that you can use uh, different color coding or the same colors for different dimensions and um, you are losing the um, the consistency on yeah. a global scale because it's not connected right it, the, the, each bit is isolated yes so is there oh. any um any way to overcome this or are you planning to um to integrate it uh, further because you are able to use it as a filter right or yeah, yeah. Um, no no so, so the main the main issue is like when when you drag and drop something in the view tableau 
for, for us to render that chart, Tableau is giving us some information about what you have drag and drop, right? So for mm -hmm. example, one information that we have that is uh, important, if I look here, you will see the sales, right? Uh, this is like the really the official Tableau tooltip and the cells have the right formatting and everything because that's your default formatting. Mm -hmm. um, we have asked Tableau to, in a future version of the Viz extension a API, that when we get the info of a dimension, that if you have set some default color, like default formatting color, or even if the color has already been set, that we receive this information currently, we don't have it. So currently, I have no idea. Like the Viz, uh, the Viz extension has no idea of if that field is already used somewhere else, and if yes, what the color. So currently, technically, we cannot do it. But this was one of my first feedback to Tableau and be like, hey, we would like to have this default format. And they say, OK, good idea. We, we will implement. Now, I don't know when, but um, <laughs> hopefully they will. I also put uh, in the chat the link to our FIQ. So we have a lot of other small questions that people usually have about, uh, for example, is there known bugs? Uh, for example, uh, right now, if you export a dashboard that has this extension, the this extension will be rendered as blank because Tableau is not able to render any extension, this or dashboard extension as, a, as an image. So if you want to export, you will need to export do, doing a, a screenshot, but you cannot export using dashboard export image. That is currently one of the other limitation. And we have a few other that everything is for us really transparent and on our website. And this is bugs that are on Tableau site. <laughs> so we are waiting for them to fix them. We cannot really do much more than, than, than that. Uh, good to know that there are discussions because it, it it really feels like um you know the the, the color coding is not connected with yeah. the, the rest of the dashboard. Now, if it if it annoys you, believe me, it annoyed me already like months ago. Like the first time I tried, I be like, "Hey, I want my colors," and they were like, "Ah, yeah, but so we have to wait." Okay, uh, the last one uh, is uh, maybe not a question, but a statement uh, to add uh, default uh, pagination uh, to uh, as a VIX extension. That would be something. Yeah. They, so I mean, if you have like a, a long table that you say, okay, I want to see the the thirty first line, and then I can go to the next page. That's actually a really good idea. I think people who want that, the only issue that I will say is people who want that usually want them to to print it. Or actually, the client that I have been talking to, they want pagination because then they want to print it in different page, like what uh, business object was doing with the listing and stuff like that. So since you cannot export it as a PDF, uh, I don't want to make people angry, but it's a, it's a really good idea to make yeah pagination. I believe we reached uh, the end of all of the questions, so there is nothing else uh, left then share the, the results of the um, of the contest, uh, Agata. Yeah, just one moment. OK, these are the results. I hope you can see them. So can you? Yes, yes. we can. Yes. So the winner is Mateusz Kamalski. But we congratulate all the participants. So we will reach out to you, Mateusz, and uh, you know share the the details about the the prize you won. Uh, and uh, yeah, congratulations to to the rest. Uh, you did an amazing job, and uh, all of the all of the uh, dashboards were uh, very interesting so it was it was hard to to select the the best one as you can see it was a close call uh, between the the first the the second and the third place so congratulations to all of you and uh, i believe that's it right 
thank you all for uh, for this uh, meeting and uh, hope to see you soon. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you. And Bye. thanks to everybody for participating tonight. Hope Thank to see you, you again. Mm -hmm.